Welcome to World Drum Club. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the Udu drum. It's a clay pot drum originating in Nigeria from the Igbo people. And the word Udu simply meaning vessel. Uh, in this case, a water vessel or water jug that has been transformed into a captivating musical instrument. And we'll talk about how it's made and how it's played in a moment, but I want to invite you to just look at this. This is a handmade udu that was made um, to order by Frank Giorgini, a percussion enthusiast. And uh, Frank started off as a tile maker and uh, did masonry and tile making and, and got interested in music and made uh, many of these drums. These are all handmade by Frank. And there are many more udus available these days on the market, but Frank's no longer making these. so. This one is a little bit rare and um, a special instrument. Uh, we'll take a look inside here later and you can see where he's dated and signed it. But um, it's a very simple instrument, very simple construction. You can see that it's basically a sphere or light bulb shape. And uh, what makes it a musical instrument as opposed to just a water vessel, of course, is the addition of this sound hole or the, the playing hole and let's look at the technique for a moment. Uh, also, I have the microphone here, which is where I would typically mic the instrument. You can even get down farther into the mouth and get a very deep sound, but this should be adequate to capture the basic essence of the instrument. I wouldn't mic it really far away. It's an instrument you want to mic close, for those of you who might be recording it. Um, we play the udu by striking the drum in several ways. The main whole technique, there's two main sounds. Of course, there's many sounds as with any percussion instrument. But the main two ways we would strike this is one with um, our palm over the hole, relaxed hand, and then leaving it down. And I checked the pitch of my drum. This is a, about a G. Not that they're tuned to the you know well-tempered scale. Uh, or they're not tuned to A440 pitch, but they're, this just happens to be about a G. Okay, so my goal there is to just relax, cover the hole so there's no air leaks, and um, stay over the hole so I get that low bass tone. Let's call that the bass. Then, a, with a quick modification, I can turn that into a higher tone, and I do that by rebounding off of the sound hole, the opening. And on this drum, that happens to be about an E, so about a sixth higher. Then, to get into some higher notes and sharper tones, more ceramic or metallic sounding, we can use our fingers. And for me, being a hand percussionist, I liken this technique to bongos. Uh, you could use frame drumming techniques, people use tabla techniques, any kind of the, any number of the various finger techniques that have been developed for various world drumming instruments. One of the sounds that I often use is just striking the drum near, near the hole, between the hole and the neck. Uh, of course, it could be anywhere. You can strike on the neck, maybe even on the very top. You can also, uh, so those are the main sounds, and then maybe just finger tapping, you know, whatever you want. You can do brushing. Uh, there's all sorts of different subtle sounds you can make. You can also play the top hole. And if you do that, you can change the pitch by covering the other hole. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, you can do it. It's a little bit slippery on these pants, but. Or. All right, so those are some um, some of the sounds that you can create. So let's talk for a minute about how the Udu is made. So this one is a traditional 
style that's made in the traditional style, which is made with a coil. And they start off, you know how you used to make those little ashtrays and bowls when you're in uh, elementary school? Because you needed ashtrays when you're in elementary school. No, you were, <laughs> we made those little dishes uh, and you take clay and you roll it up into a little, a little snake or worm shape and then you would spiral it out, right? And then you'd kind of smooth it out and then you'd have a little, you know, coaster or dish or whatever you'd make. I know you were making ashtrays. Um, so that's how this is made. So this starts off with a coil and it's just a coil all the way up and then the whole thing is smoothed out. And I don't know if this is coming through on the video. It's pretty smooth, but you can see where this has been smoothed by hand. So this is not a, a pot that was thrown on a, a pottering wheel. This is a hand, you know, hand constructed, not that potters aren't hand making what they're making, but you know what I'm talking about, right? It's completely done by hand. No other devices are used other than the clay and the person's hands. Um, and then, you know, all the different adornments, designs, uh, flashings, fittings, any other things that need to be done to it, including cutting the hole, are done and then it's fired. So very simple, beautiful uh, construction. This drum I purchased in 1998 and just want to show you guys, I'll put some B-roll up here so you can see inside, but it says Udu on the inside with these little stamped letters. It says Udu um, 1998 and below that is Frank's signature. So you can see that he signed it on the inside of the neck. Okay, so that's a really special drum. I really don't leave the house with this too often. Don't take it outside much. I just sort of keep it in a case and once in a while I, I break it out and I go, ooh, ooh do. Not really. <laughs> but it's a cool instrument and I hope you can uh, get your hands on one at some point and, and check it out. So there are some other models of Udu and I have a couple uh, that I purchased years ago. Um, LP, basic Latin percussion company, bought a lot of the rights to Frank's designs and started mass producing them in what they call the clay tone series. So I have two of those. This is one, it's called the Utar, and it's got a big flat surface, different size neck, but basically the same functionality, but you play it a little bit differently. And then I also have the tum, uh, Tamborata, which is a sm kind of a smaller derivative of the Utar. There's lots of different examples, so if you search for Udu drum designs or Udu drum models, you can find a lot um, and they're still for sale, they're still being made. And the good news is if you get what's called the clay tone series, you can get those actually very inexpensive, um, under $100 US in many cases. This drum by contrast was several hundred dollars in 1998 when I had this one made and now you can't even get them. I imagine these are much more expensive at this point. So the clay tone, similar sound, get the job done, you know, no problem. These, um, of course, are a little bit, you know, they just have that handcrafted little extra touch. Um, and I've used this one in some of my recordings. Um, I think almost all of my CDs, I use Udu on at least one track. So before we finish up, I want to give you guys some homework, and that is to let us know below in the comment section if you have an Udu, if you've played the Udu or if a friend of yours has played it, what your experience is with the Udu, and if you've recognized the Udu in some music, which maybe you have, uh, put a link or put the name of the song below so other people in the World Drum Club community can go check that out. And you might be surprised where the Udu has been or where it is, you know, uh, different sounds. And maybe you've heard it and didn't know it was an Udu drum. So the characteristic is that kind of uh, low, this sound, and also the... So this two-tone, two-pitch change, which is kind of a giveaway that that's an Udu drum and not some other kind of drum. All right, so like, subscribe. Thanks for uh, joining me in World Drum Club. I'm always interested in your comments and suggestions. Patrons, patreon.com slash Kalani. You can get in touch with me more directly than here on YouTube. Uh, here's the Udu going out. Leave your comments below.